Welcome to Oncology Podcast News. I'm your host, Valerie Lin. Today's topics include chemotherapy drug paclitaxel not effective in certain breast cancers, first cycle use of growth stimulating factor decreases fever and hospitalizations, more vitamin D could mean fewer cancers. In 1998, researchers first reported that giving chemotherapy with the drugs cyclophosphamide doxorubicin, and paclitaxel after surgery for breast cancer reduced the recurrence of cancer. Since then, paclitaxel has become an important drug for adjuvant treatment of breast cancer. However, paclitaxel has side effects such as peripheral nerve damage and muscle and joint pain. A recent report published in the New England Journal of Medicine stated that paclitaxel might not be helpful in some breast cancers. In that report, researchers found that while paclitaxel was helpful in patients with HER2 positive breast cancer, the drug might not be effective in women with HER2 negative, estrogen receptor positive, lymph nodes positive breast cancer. HER2 is a protein receptor that is present in certain breast cancers. Therefore, the drug may not be beneficial to all breast cancer patients. At the European Cancer Conference, Researchers reported that prophylactic or preventative use of growth factor Nulasta decreased the incidence of fever and hospitalizations resulting from low white blood cell count. Neutropenia, or low white blood cell count, accompanied by fever and infection, is one of the most serious side effects of chemotherapy. Physicians have to reduce the chemotherapy dose when this occurs, which also results in chemotherapy being less effective. Researchers analyzed 2,282 patients with breast cancer. 1,303 of the patients received the white blood cell stimulating growth factor Nulasta with first cycle of chemotherapy. They found that 4% of Nulasta treated patients were hospitalized with febrile or fever related neutropenia, whereas 10% of patients who did not receive Nulasta were hospitalized. In addition, 9% of the patients who received preventative Nulasta therapy and 24% of the patients who did not receive Nulasta had chemotherapy dose reduction. Administering Nulasta as a precaution significantly reduced the incidence of fever-related low white blood cell count. Investigators have noted that vitamin D may be important in cancer risk because of the findings that rates of breast, colon, and ovarian cancer are lower in sunnier regions of the world than regions where cold winters limit people's sun exposure. Sunlight stimulates vitamin D synthesis, and people who get little sun exposure tend to have lower vitamin D. A report in the journal Nutrition Reviews found that rates of cancer tended to fall as average vitamin D levels climbed. The protective effect against breast cancer seen to begin when the level of vitamin reached 32 nanogram per milliliter. For colon cancer, it was 22 nanograms per milliliter. The average level of vitamin D among Americans in winter is 15 to 18 nanogram per milliliter. Based upon these data, the researchers feel that if Americans were able to maintain a vitamin D level of at least 55 nanogram per milliliter, 85,000 cases of breast cancer and 60,000 cases of colon cancer could be prevented every year. Worldwide, these figures could be 350,000 and 250,000 respectively. That level can be achieved with a combination of diet, supplements, and 10 to 15 minutes a day in the sun. For fair-skinned people, just three minutes in the sun can be adequate. For OPN, I'm Valerie Lynn.